Let me now, colleagues, turn to our keynote speakers. Mayana, thank you for making time uh, to join us today. We all know that gender equality, and particularly gender equality in STEM, has been a central topic for you from the very beginning of your assignment with UNDP as director of the Regional Bureau for Europe and Central Asia. The floor is yours, please. Thank you, Garrett. Good morning, colleagues, Deputy Minister. Good morning from New York. Uh, it's still dark outside. It's a very early morning, uh, but a great pleasure to be here. And congratulations, Garrett and Louise, to all the teams for organizing such an important event. And uh, it's an honor for me to, to be invited to open it and address it. Why, why is STEM so important? And not only to me, um, but why does this issue concern all of us? The COVID-19 pandemic has halted progress on gender equality and women's empowerment across the globe. Nowhere is this more evident than in the world of work. And as a result of job losses caused by the pandemic, women employment rate in Europe and Central Asia is projected to be almost 15% lower than that of men. And according to ILO, barely a fourth of women's jobs lost in the region will return in 2021. But throughout the COVID-19 crisis, demand for workers in STEM occupations has continued and is only expected to rise in the future. So in other words, COVID-19 has only accelerated the transition to the future of work. And the future of work is intrinsically connected with STEM fields. So as a consequence, women risk, again, of being left behind. In Europe and Central Asia, the share of women researchers in engineering technology crosses 40% only in a few countries. The number of women in computer science is particularly low compared to men. Women are only 18% of ICT specialists in the EU and just 16% of founders in the ICT tech fields in Southern Caucasus and Western CIS are women. Now, gender equality in STEM and hence in the future of work is a goal unto itself. We cannot deny half of humanity the opportunity to enter and succeed in the high growth sector that powers the green and digital transformation in COVID response. But there are also compelling economic reasons for us to strive towards this goal. An increase in STEM employment would help reduce labor market shortages. In the EU, for example, closing the gender gap in STEM could lead to an additional 1.2 million jobs. The higher productivity of STEM jobs can lead to higher wages, as a study by the European Parliament has shown. And more women graduating in STEM subjects, choosing careers in higher wage sectors, can gradually increase their average earnings. So again, this would help us to close the gender wage gap. Unfortunately, cultural and social norms, as the Deputy Minister has mentioned as well, a lack of childcare support and inadequate parental leave policies are major barriers to women entering and progressing in careers of their choice. These obstacles are amplified manifold in STEM fields whose dominated work, men dominated workplaces and entrenched gender stereotypes present great impediments for many talented women. This is the reason why we must join forces to advance gender equality measures where they matter the most. We must remove gender stereotypes in education, raise awareness and promote STEM subjects to girls and women and offer career guidance so that women and girls no longer hesitate to study in fields that are dominated by men. And there are seemingly simple measures, like promoting a less masculine image of science, which could encourage more women to enroll in STEM majors at university. And what is very important is that we begin at the tertiary level to ensure that we bring a gender lens to all upskilling and downskilling and reskilling programs all along the STEM pathway. I very much look forward to Professor Julia Lee's insights on these issues. Now, dear colleagues and participants, our regional flagship STEM for All platform launched last year is engaging with multiple partners from practitioners to policymakers in sharing knowledge, building coalitions, and making connections to advance gender equality. Earlier this year, the platform facilitated the Girls in Tech Central Asia event, 
some of you might have uh, attended it. It brought together leaders from the tech industry and ICT role models to share experiences. It offered advice to more than 120 women in Kazakhstan, Kyrgyzstan, Tajikistan, Turkmenistan and Uzbekistan. Now, one of our goals in the platform is to profile high impact initiatives by our partners government, but also the private sector. For instance, the Engineer Girls of Turkey project is implemented by Limak Foundation with the Turkish Ministry of Family, Labor and Social Services, the Ministry of National Education and also UNDP in Turkey. It is a great model of how we can increase the employability of qualified women in engineering with scholarships, internships and mentoring and coaching support. Another example comes from Azerbaijan. UNDP has partnered there with USAID in piloting a nine-month mentorship program to equip young women and girls with tools and advice to progress in STEM fields. The platform is powered by the Accelerator Labs, a UNDP learning network created in 2019 to accelerate progress towards the achievement of the Sustainable Development Goals. Now, before I close, I want to emphasize and summarize that achieving gender equality in STEM is key, not only to women's empowerment, but to our societies and economies. This issue is so vital that it requires all our concerted actions. I'm very pleased to see UNDP Accelerator Labs connecting across countries to propel this crucial agenda forward and congratulate once again, all our colleagues for making this dialogue happen. I hope it will be the first of many learning networks catalyzed by our ACT Labs and the STEM for All platform. The world and the future of work need women's skills, perspectives, talent and leadership, as much as those of men. So therefore, let us seize this opportunity again to move forward and towards an equal future. I very much look forward to today's discussions and Gerrit, back to you. Thank you so much, uh, Mayana. Thank you for giving, a, if you wish, a strategic bird's eye perspective, but also very interesting and illustrating examples from, from around the world. And let me also join you in congratulating the Accelerator Labs who have been the, the cornerstone of uh, us coming together today. Mm -hmm.